Hey, Jimmy Teak here with Phoenix Home Inspections. Uh, I'm actually doing another project today. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Now, I do a lot of home inspections and a lot of times people are, it'd be surprising how many times that people don't have uh, outlets in the bathrooms. Uh, actually, the IRC, or actually it's the National Electric Code, the NEC, actually requires at least one single outlet. Now, I have outlets in here, but what I'm doing is, uh, <laughs> you'll probably laugh at me, I'm actually changing this toilet seat out to a bidet uh, type toilet seat. Uh, typically, of course, if you're wondering why, uh, it's COVID. Um, and to be honest with you, we're like the only country that uh, uses toilet paper. If you, uh, That's kind of an interesting fact. But anyway, um, I actually got one. Uh, I thought, well, shoot, I'll put one in my bathroom to see if I like it. My wife loves it. My son uses it all the time. He's like, I want one for my bathroom. So that's what I'm doing. Now, you can buy a bidet that hooks up to your cold water, but what, I'm, what I got was one that you can actually plug in and it's got its own uh, water heater tank in it, so that way it's warm water, so it doesn't like really wake you up in the morning. So, but the problem is, I don't have an outlet. I have one that's actually on this side of the wall. I don't have, well I got one that's on the sink, but I don't want to run an extension cord. Um, so, something about bathrooms, kitchens, all that, you have to have GFCIs. And what a GFCI is, is one of these outlets that's got the button that if you get a ground fault or uh, a shock or whatever, it keeps you from getting electrocuted, it hits. You have to have one within six feet of water source. I have my sink, and I've got my tub, so I'm putting this GFCI in. Now, if you're not familiar with electrical, typically your electrical, if you're on a slab or a crawl space, typically your electrical is going to run across the attic. So I'd have to get up in the attic. I've got a basement, so directly below here has a uh, bathroom with a drop ceiling, so I can actually access the electrical that's going to it. So that way, I find the, my, the main feed for that bathroom. I'll pig leg off of it, put it in an enclosed junction box. Ha <laughs> Expansion coat. Um, set that we find all the time. And then I'll come over and feed this. So what I'm gonna have to do is take this and if you're thinking about doing something like this, one, I'm not a licensed electrician, so do this at your own risk. But anyway, you got to have a GFCI. When you buy a GFCI, typically they don't come with cover plates, so you'll have to buy one of these. These are like 15 bucks for a 15 amp, 20 bucks for a 20. Um, these are probably like, I don't know, 98 cents. Um, or a dollar, the worst. These are a couple of bucks. Now, what makes this special on my junction box, unfortunately they were out of the other one, so I had to drill a hole in this one. But they got screws, so when you tie them, these are for hollow wall. This will flip up and catch the drywall. The same on the bottom. So what you'll do is you'll slide this in once you catch your hole. So you want to cut it tight. Slide this in once you turn the screws. This will press against the drywall. Of course, before you do that, make sure you pull your wire. Now, since I'm going through the bottom, I'm going to actually place this over here. Trace a line, cut it. Then you need a really long drill bit which I'll be able to go in the hole, drop this down, and drill straight through the floor. And like I said, I'm gonna leave the bed in, so that way when I go underneath the basement, I can actually see where that hole is. I pretty much know where it's gonna come out at, but that's how it is. So let me get started. I'll do a two part. I'll do the electrical, then I'll do the plumbing. So I uh, catch you here. I'll do a little bit of snip shops here and there. Okay, so there's a hundred different ways of doing this. Uh, like I said, I made sure that this was hollow by just beating on the just pick it on it, hear it hollow. I'm gonna come over here, make sure it's level. Using my little four inch. And, you know, I'm gonna make this pretty tight. There's a hundred different ways you can cut this thing out. I prefer razor blade. To be honest with you, you can use an osculating tool, you can use a sawzall. Um, a lot of times, what people do is they'll take a drill bit, hit the corner. So they can get their uh, saws on her. Oscillating tools are the ones that's got the flat blade that goes back and forth. It's real small. That'll make a really nice flat cut. But uh, a razor blade works just as well. So I'll take that. I should mention I get no uh, reimbursements or anything, but I'm a Milwaukee guy. Use my little Milwaukee razor blade. Like I said, I'm just gonna kind of puncture it. But honestly, I gotta do is. Come through here, score it a few times. Um, what you do is you have a come through the sheetrock here, 
then eventually you're going to get into um, the paper. Okay, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use my little saw here uh, just to make sure I got a good clean edge. But anyway, I've already scored it pretty good. That's all I needed. take my auger bit like I said it's got a little nice screw tip in there I should be able to take this go in at right at an angle and just drill right through Let me show you what it looks from the bottom. Okay, so what I've done is I went upstairs, I pulled the drill out so that way I have access to the hole. <laughs> so I'm using this little tester here. See, it lights up red. Um, I did turn my lights up, it's too dark to see. Um, but these were still hot with the switches. So I got two lines coming in here. They're both going over to that wall coming down. So what's happening is I got one that's hitting the outlet over here. On this side and then on the other side of the wall the living room so it really don't matter which one to hit but it doesn't matter which circuit breaker I turn off before I cut the wire so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is speed this wire up I just pre-cut off about six foot just in case I had to make my connection over there I really only need like three foot so I'm gonna feed this up through my hole I should be able to go upstairs stick my hand through that outlet and find that wire and pull it through there and then um, what I'm using is 12-2 Nomex. Um, the 12 identifies the cage, 2 means 2 wires with ground. So you want to use at least 12 gauge. You could use 14 since it's a, oh, no, it's for, yeah, 15 out. But um, I'm running 12-2, that's what I have. You know, if you ever swap them out to 20 amp, you might as well go ahead and have the 12-2 wire so it makes it simple with the half and a pull new wire. So let's go upstairs and finish. Okay, so now I came back up here. You can actually see the wire, so I can actually just grab a hold of it, pull it right out. You can see I fit quite a bit. So I have this. What I'm gonna do is probably score, but you don't want to cut too deep because you don't want to hurt the insulation of the other wire. So I'm just gonna kind of mark it. Pull that off. Me, I just like to cut the cardboard. Okay, so now you got these ends. Um, I usually cut about a half inch or pull about a half inch of the insulation off. This is 12 2. So you want to get it in the right groove, which is usually the second one, not the first one. From the bottom. Okay. Now, go ahead and feed my wires through my box. Now, on your outlets, it doesn't matter how you wire them up on a GFCI initially. So, your power that's coming in will need to go the ones that are not taped. This is for anything that's downstream, so that way if you can have regular outlets all the way down, if this is feeding them, it'll cause it to trip. If you wire it backwards, it won't quite work right. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, enter in my white. White goes to the lighter collar, black to the other. Yeah. So. Sometimes guys will take it and bend the wire, go around screw. Actually, that's how I, a lot of times I'll do it. But you know, just pull them, make sure they're in there good, that they don't come out. Give it one last good turn. So, these wires. Go 
what you may have to do is go down the stairs and pull the extra slack out. And something that's kind of interesting about outlets is um, you ever see where the ground plug is up on top like this installed? That's actually the correct way of doing it. The thought process is if the uh, outlet barely comes out, if you hit that top, this won't shock you if it was the other side. But anyway, so these will go in here like so. These are designed to slide back and forth so you can actually get them somewhat lined up. Get it squared. That's why they call these like the hollow wall, or I call them hollow wall junction boxes. I have to have a flat head. Small one. is towards the shower and more than likely it'd get wet um, I'll be able to hit the reset button and we'll be live okay so I'm back sorry it's a little dark in here um, reason why is because I killed the power <laughs> um, here we go so what you want to do is you want to come in kill the circuit breaker uh, figure out which one you're actually doing. Um, I'm actually going to tap into my bathroom down here. This is actually the supply hitting it. This is going over to my light switch. Um, so everything's hot. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this line. This is my feeder. Um, luckily I've got plenty of, enough slack to be able to play here. But you need to have a uh, this is a single injection box. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these knockouts. I've got connectors that's connect into it. I'm gonna run my wires in it, use my wing nuts to put all my whites together, all my blacks together, all my grounds. Then I'm gonna put a cover plate and it does have screws on the back. So I'm gonna actually mount this up here. So it's up out of the way. And then that way I can uh, run all my wires. So I'll show you what I got going on here in a little bit. You can see I've got my box screwed up in here. LVLs are really tough, so don't expect to think you're going to run like a drywall screw or something. You need a heavy duty screw. I've got my connectors on here, uh, ran through there. The reason why I put those on there is to actually protect the wires, because after you uh, hit the knockouts on them, um, you can have a sharp edge cut. Kind of, this is a metal box. You definitely don't want any shorts. Um, so, you know, tighten these up. That way, if somebody pulls on the wires, it actually holds it into the box. Um, this is actually what you want anytime you have a junction up in the ceiling or attic, anywhere, is you want these to actually be inside of a junction box. Uh, I see this all the time when I'm doing inspections. They don't make their connections or their splices here. And then the other thing they always forget is to put this little cover plate on it. So that way it keeps any pie from sticking their fingers in it. But right now, you can see I went ahead and turned the lights back on, the power back on. So we've got power here, and I should have power upstairs. And since it's a GFCI, I got my GFCI tester. I'll go up there, test it, 
and I am finished on the electrical side of it. Alright, so I came back up by default. Typically these are always trip. I'll go ahead and hit reset. Uh, never hurts to have one of these little testers. Put them right in there. You can see the green light. Shows it's wired correctly. Hit that. It trips the power. So it works just fine. And with that being on that feed going up with me tripping, I'm not tripping the ones downstairs. So that is perfect. So anyway that's it for the electrical wiring so if you need if you're ever looking for a home inspector uh, somebody that knows how to do a lot of this stuff and knows what we're looking for uh, look me up phoenix home inspections uh, it's, yeah phoenix home inspections llc.com so i'll catch you later uh, stay tuned for the second video